Hello and welcome back to Postmortem, everyone, where we are death walking around this party, having a look at some clues, finding out who did it and everything. Let's have a look at this. The new five point plan, what the future holds for Galacia. With tensions high as we approach the fifth anniversary of the Galacian turmoil, Prime Minister Connolly is planned to unveil a new five point plan to bring a ceasefire and embark on path to reconciliation. Will this new plan succeed? The pro Asia culture unforgotten coalition, now holding 35% of the popular vote, will need a lot of convincing after the insult they saw MacDillian's plan to be two years ago. So yeah, same as always, I will read a little bit of these, you can pause it, read the entire thing, you're probably going to be faster than me, and we will check around this entire place. So this is Franz the butler here, we don't know who this guy is, let's meet him. I do not believe we have met. Well, hello, Bill Selden. You are extremely important. My name is Death. Yeah, let's let's not do that. Um, my name is not important. My, a real person of secrecy. I see. Certainly, every gala needs those to keep it interesting. In any case, I am glad to have such interesting individuals attending our event. I hope you will be interested in contributing towards our fundraiser. Oh, certainly. Most excellent. Good evening. How may I help you? Um, could you tell me about yourself? My, my, where do I start? Uh, the beginning would be a good bit. Why, yes, I was born here in Antrium in 1833. My, tha my father was a proud founder of the Selden Glassware Inc., a moderately successful business specialising in making glass dishes and ornaments. My mother has been quite the world traveller and part of many charity organisations even despite being wheelchair bound. She passed away when I was still just a child. Oh, that's... I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you, but it was a long time ago. I've come to terms with it. Well done. Good on you. After finishing school, my father employed me in a managerial position at his company. When he passed away, I moved into the CEO position. I quickly recognized a few, shall we say, shortcomings of my father's limited policies. Mm, it's only it's a perspective of new CEOs to improve on the former's work, that's generally what happens. Indeed, and so I did. You see, while my father began his company through his love of making glassware, he failed to realise that the dish and cookery market was only so big. But I noticed there was much more demand for glass manufacturing in a whole different industry, windowing. So you capitalised on the new markets and abandoned your father's legacy. You capitalise on new market though, that's, that's the main thing. Precisely. I revamped many of our plants into window glass manufacturing, met with a lot of powerful suppliers, and the rest is history. Nowadays, Selden Glassware provides all form of products, but it was this initial change that really pushed us forward. Sounds like a, typ a typical day in running of a company. Uh, it sounds like you diverged from your father's idea of the company and fascinating. Well, it is fascinating. And I don't really want to annoy this guy, because it is true that he just kind of, you know, Bye, Dad! Thanks for all the help and everything. Um, right, fascinating. Indeed, albeit I was just the right man at the right place, following the simple current of business. After all, isn't the whole point of business to make money? Um, well, indeed, as long as the profits keep increasing, you have done your duty. So many people underestimate the importance of financial security. What about providing goods and services for others, supporting the society? That one I would go with. So you would say it's all about money then? If your business grows at the cost of your workers, low wages and stretched out hours, I would hardly call it success. That one too. I'm going to go with three though. What about providing goods and services for others, supporting the society? Is that not what we are gathered here tonight? Why we are gathered here tonight? A successful business does not preclude one from giving generously to their fellow men. Yes, you need resources in order to implement changes, and being rich gives you a lot of resources. Or perhaps you are getting rich at the cost of others. I could really... Oh, this guy's... Do it. I see. You do not look too fondly on us progressive folk. If that's how you feel, it's a shame most people of Gal... Galicia... Galicia... I forgot it again. How is that name so like hard for me to pronounce? Galicia, call it that. Seems to share your ideas. Pray tell, are you familiar with the Ottoman fire incident a few years back? No, I can I'm not. Shortly after Ottoman opened the very first automobile factory in the country, 
it was destroyed in a fire set by a few angry individuals opposing the ra a radical automotive industry changes and the upper classes monopolization of it. So this is a new ager. He basically screwed over his dad's old ager ways and went about doing it this way. It was a sad incident that showed just how irrational many so-called old agers can be, wouldn't you agree? You are old though, you are old ager because you are old. Um, the fact you create efficient mode of transportation provide people with jobs, yes it would. Perhaps push was too aggressive, not necessarily a push for automobiles would have put many small horse carriers out of business and build a city street with smog. That's true. Uh, just because they reach for radical means to get heard does not mean their voice is irrational. Uh, perhaps there will be real impact as factories, perhaps the push was too aggressive. Hmm. Okay, so it is true that it would have made more jobs and everything, but it is true as well that it would have filled the streets with smog and it would have put horse carriers out of business. I'm going to go with that. True. Horse riders would be out of luck, but they would be welcomed back as valued automobile operators, and issues of smog could be dealt with in the future. The great thing about progress is that enough of it can self-correct and fix the problems it creates. Just give it time. The automobiles can revolutionise the entire country. Not only personal transport, but any industry would benefit from faster and more efficient transfer of goods. If we could rearrange some of the roads to suit the routes better. I think my mouse cursor keeps like staying in here. I'm not sure if you can see it, so I've just kept moving it to the side. Just in case you saw it then. Um, a city needs to be flexible, grow, change, adapt. That would require potentially destroying houses and moving people from their homes. Um, well... Yeah, it would potentially destroy houses and move people away from their homes. It would also make homes very bad and everything. But a city does need to be flexible. It needs to grow, change, adapt, get more people in. But then again, that just makes more money for the big people. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the second one. Well, yes, undoubtedly, not without compensation. As new tools and ideas emerge, our lifestyle will adjust to them. In the end, these changes will make everyone's lives easier. Mm, to a degree, they do. Is it a bit backwards? Shouldn't our inventions adapt to our lifestyle, not our lifestyle to our inventions? Is it necessary? What is wrong with the current lifestyle? Well... What... Um... Hmm. Yeah, shouldn't our inventions adapt to the lifestyle? But if these inventions make life easier, more convenient, and even cheaper, shouldn't we welcome them? Ugh... But enough of such changes and the culture is no longer what it used to be, your heritage becomes lost. That's not even a good argument. I suppose each generation has their version of culture, really. Um, because culture isn't meant to be changed. The more we talk, the more I see you disagree with my beliefs and ideas. A set of fresh eyes is always good feedback. Perhaps I need to think about some things. In any case, this has been great food for thought for me. I will be braggingly admit I was recently honoured to be invited by the New Age of People of Peace Party to give a public speech for the new Five Point Plan on their behalf. Bragging indeed, I see. Um, okay, so what is this Five Point Plan? You must really not be from around here, eh? Well, welcome to Galacia anyway. My factories proudly offer great opportunities for skilled foreign hands. Um, okay, I'm afraid glass making isn't my life calling. Ah yes, but the Five Point Plan, it is our Prime Minister's attempt at a diplomatic solution to the turmoil. Calls for s What on earth does that say? That's C at the beginning? Cessation of violence and bringing of both New Ages and Old Ages to the same table to talk. Something that's been difficult, as you can probably imagine. Well, yes it has. I did just see a wonderful article on it, its potential impact recently. I believe it should be somewhere around here if you look around. In any case, I took your time I took your time enough. Do go mingle a bit and consider donating for Rose Hill High. Okay, I'll talk to you later. I don't really like that guy. There's something weird about him. Can I look in my notebook? Ooh, well look at all this. Can I oh I click these things. Okay, so I've got all this information here then. I see. And these are the characters speaking to, so we've got Selden. The wealthy and successful host of tonight's gala, he has a warm and welcoming demeanour about him. He is the CEO of the highly successful Selden Glassware Inc, founded by his father. After speaking with you, he was intrigued by your pro-old age of beliefs. Ophelia. Ophelia is the young daughter of the recognised and influential Thatchers, a beautiful and charismatic Bon Vivian. Something like that. The Thatchers are powerful figures in Gla 
Galicia, with their stake in Galmedia Inc. running the country's first radio broadcast. Does not look kindly on immigrants, believing they do not belong in here and they don't respect the tradition. Franz. Uh, never gets along with his parents, choosing to pursue an independent life of freelance waiter and server. Supports improved treatment of workers, complaining about exploitations with many of his previous employers. Does not believe in women have equal rights, agrees with old age ideas of working quality, but prefers the new age's entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial methods of achieving their goals. Okay. Oh. Oh, hello. That's my agent. Okay. Who are you? Hello. Hello. To you too. Okay, so this is... Ekaterina. <laughs> Ekaterina? I think that's actually how you say it. Marcel, what is so special about me? Um, just making acquaintances. Well, all right then. I am Ekaterina. <laughs> um, do I detect a slight accent? Oh, I am not from Glacia, Glacia, whatever the hell this name is. If that is what you are referring to. Um, where are you from then? <laughs> oh my goodness, um, what's Wigorostan? <laughs> it is one of the small nations to the east. Most people have not heard of it. Uh, what brought you here? My parents and I moved here when I was very young, pursuing a better life, more opportunities, or something like that. I never inquired much. How come you never asked? Were you not curious? I suppose I am just more interested in moving forward with my life rather than dwelling on the past. I'm doing an awful accent during this, I will apologise straight away. But she did have a bit of an accent and that's the only accent I can do. Um, okay, so isn't your heritage important? I understand I feel the same. Okay, isn't your heritage important though? Oh golly, you're sounding like one of them. Now my accent's just gone. I shouldn't have said sorry, it's gone now. Oh golly, you're sounding like one of them. Old edge of things now. I'm not one of them. Well, good on you there. Honestly though, I do not much care for the local politics or school of Galicia like I mentioned. I am not from here. Then why are you here? Uh, that's understandable, I suppose. But you live here. Frankly, I am quite adept at shunning things out when they don't pertain to my interest. Life is too short to worry about the petty squabbles of others. For all you know, I could die this very night from a heart attack. You could? Indeed. So why waste my time worrying needlessly about the inevitable? That's one of the reasons I find biology so fascinating. Mother Nature is not very motherly in that respect. It is the strongest child that survives. Survival of the fittest, they call it. Exactly. No attachment, just pure objective science. Only as humans think of our survival in emotional terms. That's why animals are so better, so much better to study, so much simpler. Animals have emotions too. You can't prove that. You can't disprove it. Undoubtedly animals are very complex. But the more we study them, the more we explain via simple biology. Bodily functions, chemicals, reflexes. And you know this how? I have... I have read some reports on dissecting of animals, to learn what is inside. It's interesting to see what makes them tick. Uh, your job? No, not exactly, just a fascination of mine. That's a little disturbing, not gonna lie. <laughs> it's nice that you're taking, like, you know, the time to learn all this, but it still a little disturbing. Um, everyone needs a hobby though? Yes. Better than setting things on fire like some of the Galatians, isn't it? There's just so much we can learn from dissecting biological beings. My accent is all over the place tonight and I do not know what it is meant to be. Sadly though, our society shuns on doing that with other humans. I think she's actually meant to be German. So whatever the hell accents I've been doing, none of them have been German. But I cannot do a German accent. Apart from if I go like, Zen welcome, kind of thing. And that, that sounds more French to me. Uh, there's still those who need to do that real shimmy dude. I'm actually quite bored of you. <laughs> Glad you agree. If only it was possible to ever obtain a human carcass for today. Okay. Okay. Now you're going a bit insane. 
Aren't humans just another type of animal after all? Well, yes, we are a part of the animal kingdom, but you don't just go about dissecting, uh, humans. Or animals, for that matter. You don't just go around dissecting shit, unless it's dead. And then you can have a look how much you want. Exactly. And if we can learn so much from the study of animals, think how much more we could learn from the actual dead humans. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Why not? I am talking purely science here. There is not so much to learn from our biology. Um, even so, everyone not everyone wants their dead body disrespected that way. You need to obtain their permission first. Yes. That's good. Do that. So you seem to agree then. Should we study a dead human if we get a chance? Yeah, yeah, I believe you should. But it's not right without prior permissions. If you get a chance, no then, so it is the second one for this. Hmm, interesting viewpoints, something to take into consideration. Why are you asking me all those questions anyway? Is this some kind of interview? Um... Just making sure to have my reasons to ask. Okay, let's go for... Um... I was curious, you don't seem too forthcoming about yourself. Perhaps I have my reasons. Let's change the topic or depart. Something else I wanted to ask. Hello. <laughs> well, hello there, Ekaterina. How do you feel about the conflict? Uh, yes, let's do that. Frankly, it's not my cup of tea. Okay, I'll be going then. Bye bye. She just is not talking to me at all. So we've got this guy down here. He looks like Fred from Scooby Doo, so we're going to speak hello. to him. Hello, I'm Fred from Scooby Doo. Hello there, Fred. My name is Jerry. I'm a student at Rose Hill High, volunteering at the event tonight. Oh. What are you doing? Are you the food guy? Just small stuff. Carry food. Get people's coats. Nothing major. What is this event for? Oh. You must have heard of the incident, right? Our school got vandalised all bad. Some folks weren't happy that it allows both New Agers and Old Agers students. Um, I see. Anyway. Yeah? What do you study? What's your favourite subject? Why did you decide to volunteer? Well, I think it's good to get out and meet some new successful people at an event like this. Ah, so he's here mainly for networking. He's very smart. Oh, well, of course not. I'm here to help up my school too. But it doesn't hurt if I benefit from it too, right? Uh, no, but it does hint you have some ulterior motives. Uh, it's good that you work hard at your young age for that career. Exactly, and it's just a great opportunity with Mr. Selden on hosting the event. Really, Mr. Selden is such an inspirational businessman. That was him. God damn it. Really, Mr. Selden is such an inspirational businessman. He's turning slowly into James Bond. We're just gonna have to flow with that. Um, how is he inspirational? I mean, he took his father's so-so business and completely turned it around, finding new markets and opportunities. Uh, don't many business owners do that, though? Yeah, but not so many uh, do it as effectively and quickly as Mr. Selden did. Originally, his father produced only small home products. Glasses, jars, that kind of stuff. But when Mr. Sheldon took over, he expanded to windowing with a whole new method of cheaply making glass sheep. It was a brilliant move on his part. I mean, he really is a textbook example of a successful businessman. Sure he is. So it looks like uh, you look up to him a lot, you really like him when you grow up. It sounds like you really believe in the industrialization. Uh, you look up to him a lot. Oh, in many ways, yes. Although I wouldn't want to just pursue business for money. Um, but it's not the whole point of business to make money. Money makes the work of around, as they say. What kind of ways? Oh, just how smart and pragmatic he is, or even tonight's gala. I just hope Mr. Selden does not abandon his Galatian roots. Okay, what are his roots? There are so many beautiful things that define what being a Galatian is. Our language, music, food. Even something like when we tap three times on the mirror when entering a house as a guest. Ah, now earlier it said to Thatcher I tapped twice to be a guest. So that goes to show you that I would have been caught out if I said that. No other country actually does that. I thought that was so cool when I learned it in anthropology class. 
Um, okay, so you're more of a traditionalist then. I mean, I just really think it's important that we don't let money or success make us forget those things, you know? Just too often the New Ages pursue progress for progress's sake, completely abandoning our culture. Well, culture is what really gives our life value, money is just paper. What if the new is better than the old? That is true. What if the new is better than the old? Because let's face it, we had uh, cassette tapes back when I was younger, and now we've got like iPods and all that, and they are totally better than the old. I'm going to get so many uh, hate comments for that. <laughs> of course, there's many inventions that are useful, like the automobiles. But progress should add to our legacy, not take away from it, like with the Baker's Revolt. That is true. That at least is true. Um, don't much care for baked goods, spare me. What was the baker's revolt? Apparently, a new age baker was trying to save money by taking raisins out from our traditional holiday bread. Big argument followed that led to him getting shot in the face 47 times, it doesn't say. But it's just an horrible example of how profits make us forget our tradition. Yeah, you can see how much they uh, add up all the time, slowly forgetting your roots. In the end, as the big industrialists grow their business, the small folk who cherish our culture just get left behind. Oh, that's terrible. But don't progressive refunds move and evolve your country? Maybe at first, but in the long run, the market just gets flooded with cheap factory form goods that are all the same. It erases our heritage and destroys smaller family shops. I'm slowly becoming a James Bond grandma, it's getting good. Small, fam small family shops can't compete with big new ages. Many have been closing down. What if they all closed and only one big store was left like Asda or Tesco? They could do whatever they want, make prices high or pay their workers very little. They would have so much control. Um, people wouldn't let that happen. Diversion, well, people wouldn't let that happen. Oh yeah? Well, it has been happening, like the Ottoman factory where people protested the low wages, but nothing happened. Or changed, even. Look at Trentor, when the old, angel, old ages locals renovated old buildings and opened beautiful gardens. It attracted rich industrialists and their hipsterian children who slowly pushed them out. Benefiting from their work? That's not evolving our culture, that's taking it over. He does look like Fred from Scooby-Doo, it's not just me. And the government did nothing. Lobbied by the New Age of People of Peace Party to keep quiet. Public propaganda realised... Never... Uh, public propaganda? Where the hell did I read this? <laughs> the government did nothing. Lobbied by New Age of People of Peace Party to keep quiet. Public never realised. Swayed by their massive propaganda. The old age voice got completely marginalised. That's not what democracy should be. No surprise riots followed. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, that's just how society's grown. No, that is terrible. Exactly. That's why the TFF came about, to give the old ages their voice back. Never heard of the TFF. Wow, you're really not from here, are you? Uh, no. Oh, one of my classmates is an immigrant too. Let's be best buddies. But anyway, the Trentor Freedom Force is the biggest group that organisations that organises many protests and events to bring attention to the old age of calls. They're the only ones fighting for the small folk, so they're basically the union. Um, are they the terrorists? Are they the peaceful? They're the peaceful ones, I imagine. How do they fight? I learned all about that in history class. There was a protest in Trentor a while back and the government sent in soldiers to contain it. Many innocent people got hurt, some even died. The TFF was founded as a result of that. But now, because of more new age of pressure, the government calls them terrorists, because apparently they are responsible for some of their violent acts too. Well, that's, uh... You seem to align with their views. I mean, sometimes, if you care about your rights and love your country. But the government doesn't listen, sometimes you just need to stand up and make them listen. Right? Don't come near me, I'll stab you with a knife. Okay. Well, I press number one. Do not remember what number one was. I agree, apparently. Woo! So, you agree that some of the things like the bombing scares are understandable to bring attention to our cause? If there's no other way to be heard? Well, it depends on the circumstances. If you're literally being bogged down, it's like... That is one reason. Don't you think our circumstances warrant that? 
The TFF rise to arms, not because they are bloodthirsty, but because they love their country and want to live a decent life. Um, I just, violence in the answer now. Then what is the right answer? Should we just keep talking, knowing our pleas are falling on empty ears? Uh, you need to learn to talk better and be patient. Hmm, perhaps you have a point. What do you think we need to do? Okay, so diplomacy requires time, compromise. You need to learn to listen before you can talk. That is good. It requires leverage. It requires compromise. It always requires compromise. Because they won't want to change anything, but neither will these guys. But both will change something if they can both agree on it. Hmm, I'll definitely think about that. Thank you for your valuable input. In any case, I shall probably check on the other guests and see if they need anything. Goodbye. Well, so uh, after I talk with Fred and everything, we are leaving another episode here. So, so far, people claiming this game is about 30 minutes, if you skip through quite quickly, I could see that being a thing. But since I'm reading the story and everything, we're getting quite a few episodes out of this at the moment. I can see this going on for another one or two episodes at least, before we actually get anywhere with any of these people. None of them are very helpful. But um, I shall see you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye bye everyone.